Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Giant Stone Balls Almost 100 feet beneath a coal mine, 10 spheres were discovered about half the size of an ordinary person. Each one is about 3 feet in diameter, perfectly smooth, and may change color when it rains. The bizarre spheres were unearthed by an excavator at the coal mine in Russia, all lying close together. It was almost as if the mysterious balls of stone had been buried in prehistoric times, then discovered purely by accident. When the balls were first found, there were a lot of wild theories spinning around. Some thought they were dinosaur eggs. Some believed they were made by a lost civilization thousands or millions of years ago. And others believed they had been planted underground by aliens. But as it turns out, these stones are probably naturally formed, almost certainly from a process very similar to how pearls are made. According to Olga Yakunina from the Geology Museum of Central Siberia, these stone balls are really concretions. They formed in sedimentary rocks through the process of materials cementing around a nucleus. Something organic, like a leaf or an ancient tooth, started as the nucleus of the stone. And then, over millions of years, water flowing over the nucleus deposited minerals that all got glued together. This went on until the material was shaped into a gigantic ball of solid rock. In the end, it didn't turn out to be very mysterious at all. As for the fact that the balls change color after rain, experts say that's due to their iron oxide composition, turning them into rust. Number 9. The Tablets of Easter Island The Rongo Rongo tablets of Easter Island have never been deciphered. The tablets were inscribed in the native language of the island's inhabitants over 1,000 years ago. Each mysterious tablet contains glyphs carved into the wood, strange glyphs that don't appear to make any sense. They almost certainly tell a story, probably one of extreme importance yet nobody can figure out what they say. The oral tradition of the island, legend passed down from generation to generation, tells of the king who arrived on Easter Island and had 67 wood tablets inscribed with all of the wisdom of his people. Everything from astronomy to how to sail the seven seas, it was all written down on these tablets. And then the tablets were entrusted to the tribal leaders to keep them safe. The tribal leaders did just that, and many of the tablets have been preserved on the island ever since. There are currently 27 still surviving of the original 67, although many have been stolen and are now scattered throughout the world in various museums. What's truly bizarre is that nowhere else in Polynesia has the Rongo Rongo script been found. The glyphs on the tablets are 100% unique to Easter Island. This has made them even more difficult to decipher and almost impossible to track their origin. As of right now, scientists are still baffled, and it doesn't look like the Rongo Rongo script will ever be deciphered. Number 8. Mysterious Ancient Toys Tel Jameh is an ancient Assyrian settlement in modern Israel that was inhabited 3,800 years ago. Over the past two decades, archaeologist Gus Van Beek has been excavating the site and recovering mysterious objects. These objects range from old coins to scarab amulets, scraps of pottery, and baffling ancient toys. One of the strangest collections of objects found consisted of 17 small disks some made from chalk and others made from stone, with two holes drilled in the center. Similar objects have been found in Japan, Egypt, and even the Americas. Three of them were found in New York City at the old site of a British army camp. One of them was made from a coin, while others found across the world were made from stones 4,000 years ago. Scientists can't agree on what these mysterious artifacts were used for. Some say they were buttons, others say they were weights for looms, and others simply call them miscellaneous objects. But according to Gus Van Beek, they may have been children's toys. He thinks thread would have been strung through the holes and then stretched, allowing the discs to spin. They would have been pretty rudimentary toys, but may have made a kind of buzzing sound that ancient people found amusing. Number 7. Yaz Atash Behram and the Eternal Flame Yaz Atash Behram is one of the most mysterious temples in the entire world. It can be found in Yazd, Iran, and contains a magical treasure that's been around for 1,500 years. The temple was not dedicated to the Christian God, it wasn't made by Islamists, and it has nothing to do with the Jewish people. 
It's a Zoroastrian fire temple, the only one still standing outside of India. It contains a flame that has been burning since the year 470 AD. That was during the reign of the extremely powerful Sasanian Empire. The flame flickered to life inside the Pars Karyan fire temple, was relocated to the ancient city of Akta, where it continued burning for 700 years. Throughout the ages, as wars came and went, and civilizations rose and fell, the fire continued to be protected by the keepers of the Zoroastrian temples. It finally landed in its current home at Yaz Atash Peram in 1934. These days, the sacred flame is more of a tourist attraction than anything. It's burning inside an ancient bronze vessel and hidden on the other side of a glass wall. A person called a hirab has the important job of keeping the flame lit. Several times a day, the hirab must feed the flame dry wood to keep it alive. Only those who practice Zoroastrianism may witness the flame burning for themselves. Zoroastrianism is believed to be one of the earliest monotheistic faiths in the world, starting in Persia 4,000 years ago. It's older than Christianity by thousands of years and still practiced today. However, there are only between 100,000 and 200,000 worshippers across the world, mainly in Iran and India. Number 6. The Tucson Artifacts in 1924, a man named Charles Manier discovered 31 lead objects. They were found near Picture Rocks in Arizona and were initially believed to be relics from an ancient Mediterranean civilization. The artifacts were shaped to look like crosses, swords, and other religious objects. Some of them had Latin inscriptions, some had Hebrew, and one even had a portrait of a dinosaur on it. There were random Roman numerals engraved on the lead artifacts, and it was all very strange. To make things even more mysterious, Charles didn't find any other artifacts or signs of civilization. He found nothing except the lead objects. There was no hint that humans had ever lived in this dusty patch of Arizona. In the 1920s, the discovery of the Tucson artifacts was a revelation. The objects were believed to be proof that a Roman colony of Judeo-Christians had crossed the ocean and settled in Arizona around the year 790 AD. It was sensational. A man named Thomas Bent was so eager to discover more artifacts that he moved to the excavation site and built his house there to legally claim the property. But then came the bad news. Harvard University scholar George Valiant publicly denounced the artifacts as fake. So did Neil Judd from the National Museum at the Smithsonian Institution. Neil said the artifacts were created by an incompetent individual with a flair for Latin and a fascination with antiquity. These days, the artifacts are widely accepted as fakes. There probably was no Roman colony in Arizona. Nevertheless, there are believers who think the Smithsonian covered up the discovery so they wouldn't have to change the history books. And now for number five. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Alicia Ziglar and Candace Perry. Thanks so much for watching and spending time with us. If you are new here, welcome. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these. Number five, the Glossal Artifacts. In Glossal, France in 1924, a cavern was discovered filled to the brim with artifacts. Oddly enough, this was the exact same year Charles Manier found the Tucson artifacts. It was a good year for archaeology and for mysterious potential forgeries. A farmer was plowing his fields in France when he came across the cavern. From within the dark and creepy space, he retrieved over 3,000 artifacts. It took six years to excavate them all, and much like the Tucson artifacts, they were greeted with great skepticism. Experts to this day debate the authenticity of the artifacts, and they've never been universally accepted or positively debunked. The thing about the artifacts in France is that they were found completely by accident by a 17-year-old farmer named Emile Fradin. In 1924, the 17-year-old farmer who had to work 20 hours a day didn't have time for cooking up schemes, never mind hand-crafting archaeological forgeries. He discovered the underground chamber by accident and was shocked to see it filled with ceramic pieces of pots, human bones, and a tiled floor. In typical 1920s fashion, Archaeologists went to the cave and ripped it up piece by piece. They took out the walls, the floor, and carried it all back to their museum labs. The artifacts were dated back to between 100 and 400 AD. Then, during excavations that followed, additional artifacts were found dating back to 10,200 BC. 
the discoveries became so controversial mainly because they were so strange. For example, there were weird tablets etched in indecipherable script and clay pots with inhuman faces on them. Some experts declared everything inside the cave real, while other experts said everything was fake. Nobody could agree on which artifacts were real and which artifacts were hoaxes. Adding to the mystery, there was a modern excavation in 1983, but the summary was never published. In 1995, more research was done, and the artifacts were dated back to the year 500. Number 4. The Cursed Sapphire The Gem of Sorrow, also known as the Delphi Purple Sapphire, is a mysterious haunted artifact which allegedly brings great misfortune to those who possess it. The stone was supposedly stolen by a British soldier during the mutiny of 1857 in Kanpur, India. During the fighting and the chaos, the soldier crept into the sacred temple of Indra, stole the gemstone that had been there for time unknown, and then fled. His name was Colonel W. Ferris, and he took the gigantic purple sapphire back home to England. Then came the troubles. He fell into financial ruin. Every member of his family came down with a mysterious illness, and his life was utterly ruined. Following the ruination of the colonel, the stone fell into the hands of Edward Heron Allen in 1890. Almost immediately after he came into possession of the gem, he became the victim of a series of strange and unfortunate events. In 1902, he gave the stone to a friend, and his luck changed. But his friend then fell into despair just like all the others. The pattern of misfortune continued until Heron Allen's daughter sent the gem to the Natural History Museum. It stayed there until 1972, hidden in a drawer, until curator Peter Tandy came across it. The gem came with a letter, which said that whoever took possession of the stone should throw it into the sea. Ever since, the mysterious purple sapphire has been on display at London's Natural History Museum in their vault collection. The museum display seems to have finally broken the curse. Number 3. The Garuda Bell The Garuda Bell was found in 1944 by a young boy named Newton Anderson in West Virginia. According to legend, Newton found the mysterious bell inside a lump of coal. He dropped the coal, it broke, and he pried the treasure out from inside. It was like a chocolate egg with a prize in it. The bell is made of brass, about 7 inches tall, and it's mounted at its top by a figure of Garuda, a huge bird from Hindu mythology. But there are two things seriously wrong with the artifact. First of all, how an artifact from ancient India made its way into West Virginia is a little confusing. Second, the lump of coal was mined from a seam estimated to be 300 million years old. None of this makes any sense. Some believe the bell is a legitimate antediluvian artifact something from a lost race of intelligent beings who lived on the planet millions of years ago. Number 2. The Fisher Canyon Shoe Print The Fisher Canyon Shoe Print was discovered in Nevada in 1917 by a miner named Albert Knapp. He brought it to the attention of his mining engineer, who couldn't believe what he was seeing. The print was solidified in a coal seam, a chunk of hard material dated to the Triassic period of between 252 and 201 million years ago. Somehow, a modern shoe made its imprint in a coal seam older than the dinosaurs. At least that's what it looked like to the miners. In truth, it really does look like a shoe print. There's no denying the uncanniness of the print. However, archaeologists and geologists alike were quick to dismiss the discovery. They said that all kinds of strange shapes can turn up in ironstone, including a shoe print. The lack of additional prints suggests it was nothing but a natural phenomenon and a really strange coincidence. Number 1. Creating a Forgery Mysterious artifacts from the early 20th century turn up all the time, and scientists couldn't always explain them. But in the 21st century, scientists are pretty good at spotting forgeries from a mile away. When the archaeologist Eliseo Gil revealed a small trove of Roman artifacts, including a depiction of the crucifixion, Egyptian hieroglyphics, and one of the earliest uses of the Basque language, scientists were skeptical. Eliseo and two of his colleagues claimed to have found their artifacts in the Roman ruins of Iruna Velea. They also claimed the graffiti they found on an ancient piece of pottery was the earliest known picture of Jesus Christ being crucified. In February of 2020, these archaeologists found themselves in a criminal trial accused of forging the mysterious artifacts. 
After the relics were shown to the world, other archaeologists were quick to point out inconsistencies. The graffiti had been made using modern language, even commas and words from hundreds of years later. The wording was all wrong, sparking immediate concern. The archaeologists also forged hieroglyphics spelling out the name of Queen Nefertiti, who would have been unknown to the Basque people of Spain. A scientific commission ruled that 476 of the artifacts were either manipulated or simply not real at all. Eliseo and his colleagues were shunned by the archaeological community and disgraced. Scientists couldn't understand their discoveries because none of them had been real. Now the archaeologists are looking at upwards of five years in prison. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!